Why are, are we as human beings so scared of trying new things and being in our shell? You know, again, I'm, I don't point out particular fucking emails. I point out different emails that I get from Facebook, Twitter, you know, Patreon, and I look at this and I make an evaluation of what I really want to talk about and what are the needs that you guys need to get filled in, just so you don't lose your mind, okay? A lot of 20 and 30 year olds, uh, especially in their young 30s, you're going through a feeling of anger, confusion, and frustration, with the key one being frustration. That key one is frustration. You know why? Because things ain't moving at the speed you anticipated them to move. Have you ever thought about that? We want what we want and we want it right the fuck now. You know, uh, you know, heroin is great. You shoot it and within two minutes you're fucking buzzed, you know. You put a fucking pill in your mouth and within 45 minutes you're high or whatever long it takes, you know. Uh, you know, you smoke pot, whatever the fuck you do, drink alcohol, everything. We're so used to quickness, you know, quickness. We we want food delivered. You know, it's everything is 40 fucking minutes. Well, you know what? When it comes to life, it doesn't boil down to 40 fucking minutes. I mean, we all wish it did. We did. We're so used to everything being at our fucking fingertips, you know, especially when we're growing up. Everything is at our fucking fingertips. Especially now with technology, you know, I, I, I'm not better than any of you guys. I'm not better than any of you guys at all. The differences, the differences are we were raised at different times. We were raised at different times. When I was raised, it was four fucking channels. So if you wanted to watch TV, you had one of those four fucking channels to look at. So think about it. You got four channels and you got a playground outside. Okay, everything changed. That dynamic changed over the years. We got cable TV, you know, it got more comfortable to be in fucking at home. You know, uh, parents worry, so they tell their kids to fucking just stay in, whatever. So I came from a different world than when you came from. Uh, so let's get that out of the way. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about what's going on in today's fucking world as a 20 to a 30 year old. This is what you're feeling. Can you imagine you come out of fucking college and you fucking, you got this amount of fucking loans and now you put out, you know, your, your resumes, you get a job, you get good pay, the whole fucking thing. But now you start all over again. That's a complete different struggle. Now you're moving up the corporate ladder. Now this guy's telling you orders. This guy's telling you this. Then you're somewhere along the line, you realize this isn't what you wanted to do. Whatever the fuck it may be, whatever the fuck it may be, the thing that eats your craw the most is the same thing that eats my craw the most between the ages of 30, 20 and 30 fucking five, that it wasn't happening fast enough. Why is it happening for them fast enough and it's not happening for me as fast as I can? Well, maybe they had some type of help. Maybe they had some type of help from their father you never know. And I'm not putting anybody down here. I'm not talking about trust funds or anything like that. I'm just saying help. Help is a big one. We're all looking for that one person to help us. An uncle, a friend, somebody to put a stake in us. You know, somebody to fucking lend us money to get our venture off the fucking ground. But you know what? You know why nobody's lending you money? Because you wouldn't know what to do with it if somebody gave you that fucking money. So sometimes be grateful because you wouldn't know what to do with it. No, but okay, Joey, before you were saying, and then I'm right. Yeah, you would probably fail. And, but would you really know why you failed at that age? Would you just say it just didn't work? Selling oranges doesn't work in fucking Northern New Jersey. Okay, did you sell hard enough? Did you really put your effort into this shit? Did you really put everything you had into this shit? Or did it just didn't fucking work? Ah, that's a question you got to ask yourself. So yeah, we want everything quick. But we never fucking realize. What we never fucking realize 
is that every fucking day that we get up and we move towards something, you may not notice it, but let me simplify it as simple as, simple as I can that I learned on my own. You ready for this one? Every day you are a work in progress, you dumb motherfucker. And when I say this to you, I'm not calling you a dumb motherfucker. I'm saying this, this is, it, this is like a mirror. I'm calling myself a dumb motherfucker because that's what I finally had to tell myself one day. That's what I had to tell myself one day when in 1995, after the contest, after I had put all this work in, after everything, I asked myself, all right, I'm in this fucking jam now for five years. I'm still making $8,000 a year. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine being a parent, guys, and your son comes in looking happy and shit, and you have another son that's a fucking doctor and shit, and you got a son that made 8400 In 1986, I think I made $8,900 for the year. $8,000. That's poverty. Why the fuck would somebody even consider doing that? That is less than $1,000 a month. My best bet is to slip and fall and break my skull and collect disability. I would get more money, you fucking retard. But why the fuck would I continue to do something? After I only made 80, let's just circle it off to a fucking round number, $9,000 after five years. Would you stick it out after you made $9,000 after five years? How about you, Mike? Um, Would you? Thinking about it. Would you? You're thinking about doing something else. As a profession <laughs> or if you love something? If I love it, I'd do it and I'd still get another job. Okay. <laughs> still, I did all that stuff. I did comedy. In Seattle, there were thing called corporate events. Like we did, um, me and Josh Wolf would do, every Saturday it was a company that used you as an extra. So on Saturday mornings, me and Josh would drive to fucking Tacoma, Washington to like a fucking D studio and some guy would do, we would do videos for UPS or companies like that, that only people in UPS would see. Uh, like training videos. Like, and I'm just saying UPS, please don't quote me on this. It could have been AT&T. It could have been one of those companies. I forget who it was. I'm, I just remember one time we just had to carry boxes mm -hmm. back and forth, like a, with like a yellow vest on while the guy, the spokesman, was talking about health or OSHA standards or whatever, right. you know. At the end of five years, in 1996, I was making $9,000 a year. That is basically embarrassing. But something hit me. Something dawned on me that it was a work in progress.